that's like a that's like another thing. Like you'll see you'll see like trading gurus online and they'll make it seem like they always make money or they only make money, they only have winning trades, like the only way to be consistently profitable is to only take winning trades, but it's not the case. Like my win rate this month is about seventy percent, so I only I actually lose thirty percent of the time, but it's about what you do on those thirty percent of losing trades that's gonna determine your results. Of, uh, of a recession in this country. Uh, certainly we haven't priced that in right yet. Becky, on Saturday, a broad coalition of mortgage and finance industry leaders sent a plea to federal regulators for desperately needed cash. Requests from borrowers for the federal mortgage forbearance program are flooding in at an alarming rate. Is COVID-19 going to magically disappear, Dr. Fauci? Uh, I do not believe it would disappear because it's such a highly transmissible virus. It is unlikely that it's going to disappear. So complete negative territory. You guys all talked about it, but this is a historical day. The biggest drop we've seen since that crash in 1987. I was only two years old at that point. Well, I'm not sure it can be stopped just because we now have so many companies that I think are going to be strapped. Uh, that a recession certainly, if not on the table here right now. Record closes. All 11 sectors in the red. Tech and consumer stocks hit the worst. My fellow Americans, tonight I want to speak with you about our nation's unprecedented response to the coronavirus outbreak. So, I mean, at the beginning of 2020, the stock market was just continuously hitting all-time highs. So, I mean, it was like every single day, all-time high, all-time high, all-time high. And then when the coronavirus news came out, like over in China, like it took a hit, not like a crazy hit. But then as soon as it started coming into the U.S., I mean, there, there were literally days where the stock market would go limit down and limit up, which is when the stock market falls a certain amount in the day, they, they halt trading for like 15 minutes. And then if it goes down a certain percentage again, they actually halt trading for like another 15 minutes. And if, if it gets halted again, it's halted for the rest of the day. So the volatility was insane, like starting in, um, <clears throat> I'd say, mostly March, that's when it got like super hectic. And I mean, it gave away almost the entire year. I think if not more, the entire year of the S&P 500 was just like wiped out, like the entire year's gains. So um, it was, it was crazy. A lot of people lost a lot of money in their retirement accounts. And obviously with the whole economic side of it, a lot of people lost their jobs too. Including, including me. So I'm looking to play like a break above there because pre-market, it's about to open right below there. It's at 33.75. And the overall market's doing pretty good, so it makes me a little bit more confident about the trade.
So I'm in with a 3400 call. I'll stop myself out if the stock goes below 3360, but I want to play this break of 3370 with potential of getting to 3380. Um, so like right now I'm up about like $57. The trade's still working for me. Uh, looks like it's it's approaching that level that I want it to break. Like my eyes are right here. I want to see these sellers start wanting to sell at higher prices and they are, they're looking up. That was one trade, just one contract, 335 profit. And it's Friday, so I'm only trading just one contract. So I could have made more if I used more money, but it's also the end of the week. I don't want to be stressed out. I just want to start my weekend on a good note and not have to go my whole weekend thinking about how I didn't lock in any profit or if I used, because it could have totally went against me. I didn't know what was going to happen. And um, I actually got to stop talking because there might be a trade set up on Zoom right now. I would say, honestly, I wanted, I had the confidence before I even built up my account to where it was at, to where like I could probably get away with it, you know, doing it full time. But obviously I didn't have the capital behind me to back me up if I failed. So after the whole COVID situation hit the stock market really hard and there were extremely volatile situations, I got to take advantage of that. And I actually, so I started this year my account at $150. I grew it to about $7,000 by February, uh, mid-February, late February. And during the volatile times leading into March and throughout March, I grew that account from 7,000 to, and my goal was to get to over $25,000 because that's the pattern day trade um, minimum margin requirement is $25,000 in your account. So that was kind of, that was kind of my goal. I'm like, if I can get above 25K in my account, I'll be able to trade as much as I want without restrictions and be able to do it full time. So I, sh I was sharpening my skills during all the volatility and I grew my account in a very short period of time from 7,000 to over $25,000 in my account. So that's kind of just, when I had that moment, I'm like, I have, I have enough capital in my account to make consistent money daily. There's 64 trading days left in the year and I'm trying to be really sharp until the year ends so I'm literally tracking it down like by the days like day 12 out of 64 now and just seeing where I'm at because like it's so hard to get caught up in like just one day's results but over the long haul if you just keep consistently making money and you like for example, like if I want a $500 a day average, I might break even this week or maybe make like a $300 a day average this week, but over 64 days, over three months, it should pan out that way. So it's, it's easy to lose sight of it and make like irrational decisions that are gonna fucking affect your results and put you way far behind your goal, but so it's good just to keep me on track. That's why I just leave that up there. So my account got to a high about last month. It was at a high of about $51,000. I would say the reason I'm not struggling is because I chose a path that is challenging to go down. Um, it's kind of been in the back of my mind is like, I would love to trade for a living 
and do really good with it. And not a lot of people stick to it long enough to see that you can actually have consistent success in day trading. A lot of people don't want to risk losing more money uh, than they already have from the pandemic. And I went ahead and I saw, you know, there, there's opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity out there. And if you're willing to put in the work and learn and learn from your mistakes and keep improving yourself, you can have a lot of success with day trading. So here, here I am, I didn't have a job. I didn't really have one lined up, but I just put my head down and got to work because I'm like, there is opportunity. With, with You're gonna be taking risks no matter what type of new venture you're going after, but if you don't take risk, you're not gonna reap the reward from it. So I think a lot of people just were not willing to take the risk and they were not willing to look past the negatives to see the positives that that you can have with day trading if you really treat it as a business rather than like a gambling slot machine. You guys ever make coffee with a French press? It's halfway through the month, so like my goal is 8K, I'm on track, like there's still today to make money and then two more weeks left in this month, 10 more trading days. So there's still still potential to have a really, a really, really good month. I would say the only, the only way that you're gonna learn, no, no one, this is what I would first say, no one likes to lose money. No one likes the feeling of losing or being wrong, you know, and being, long, being wrong multiple times. But a lot of people get this false representation about trading is that you can only be successful if you're right 100% of the time, but it doesn't work like that. You need to be able to move past that and take, take the risk, like especially if you're young, like if you're in college, like I'm in college, I had a part-time job, didn't have a job, I took the leap of faith. I had an account, it was $150. And at the time, I'm like, I can afford to lose $150. You have to think to yourself, if you lose $150, if you lose $1,000, are you never gonna be able to make it again in your life? And the answer is no. You know, you got a good head on your shoulders. You know what you're doing, you're going to college. But just go ahead and take the risk. Start part-time, start slow. And you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish if you if you really put your head down and grind, and grind at it, you'll really surprise yourself. Yo, what's up, man? Dude, great job, man. Dude, great job to you, man. Insane. Oh, I'm very proud crazy, of you. Man. That Amazon trade just... What'd you I play? I don't want to talk about what happened, but I, I made money. <laughs> Did you get caught on like the initial pullback? Oh yeah. Yeah. I got caught with size on the initial pullback. Ten. Five. Five. Still ten. Five is pretty good on Amazon, man. I yeah. I I literally I waited for the pullback. I got in. Here I'll show you. What happened? What didn't happen is a better question. In 2020, the stock market did something it's never done before. It's reached all-time highs and all-time lows. In this year, I think it's hard to say one specific thing that took place, 
What we saw was a dramatic drop in stocks that have never seen levels that they reached in such a long time. And I think what happened in 2020 was it's an election year, pandemic, market scare at all time highs. I think a lot of people just, it was time to sell. So many people believe that there would never be another recession again. And they're like, okay, I'm just gonna keep trading and put, and more, borrow more money. That's insane. Yeah. It's so crazy. And it wasn't that long ago. The dot com bubble, was it? Uh, no, it was not. This was like 96, 97, 80, right. 99. So my story crosses with trading at an interesting point. Um, I am a finance major currently, so I am, I've always been attracted to the markets and to just the investment industry. Um, I didn't actually, though, start taking trading seriously till, you guess it, the crash. So I've, I've always been attracted to the markets, I've always liked the markets, I've always liked the, the thrill of it and the excitement of it, but I've, I've never had the, I don't know how to put it, but I've never had the, I guess, drive to want to just jump in. I've, I guess I've always been just a bit hesitant. But this, this recent crash really just opened up my eyes to the opportunity that the market does display. Um, I had a lot of friends that were getting into it and making good money in it. So I thought it was finally time to get my feet wet and get in. I did, I decided to first start in March started with a thousand dollars and from there I've just continued on trading every single market day. So I think the young students were clinging towards Robinhood versus other brokerage firms. One, because of the simplicity, but two, because of the ease of access. I think Robinhood is a great platform that gives an investor, your average investor that's not very knowledgeable or very knowledgeable, a chance to put their hard-earned money in a stock in a very simple way. Robinhood does not really show too much detail when you're trading. Their, their charts, their program is very simple. So I think that simplicity is very appealing to your average investor. You log in, you add your bank account, you click buy and you now hold a share of Tesla or Amazon. And it's that easy. generation. I think the younger generation finally woke up during a time where it was ideal to wake up. I think they realized that trading is not as scary as it seems. With trading, I'm just gonna start. There's, it's a mental battle, it's a mental journey, and um, I've had some pretty major setbacks, especially compared to people I trade with. But um, I've had some pretty severe drawdown, um, 
my account at roughly like 50, 60, 70% of my account at points in time where um, taking losses from trading um, too big of sizes, chasing stocks, um, and just getting in after the wave has already passed. So um, some of those trades, I really um, try to think that um, it is my fault and I do have to take ownership for that. So yeah, um, a lot of that has happened in the last four months. I have had some pretty bad, pretty bad losses. You know. stepped away from trading at least three three or four times throughout this four-year journey but my most recent um step or you know step back from trading I took uh I want to say it was a month and a half off of trading and honestly it was probably the best thing I could do for myself because I wasn't risking any capital but and during that break um I wasn't as mentally ready to trade and I think with trading I have to be 100% ready and so I um, I just got got myself mentally clear focused again and back on that path of like hey it is time to make money and um, it's time to focus on the charts I like what you say the new wolves yeah the new wolves I like that. yeah COVID oh that's that's the thing COVID yeah COVID is giving me so much more time to COVID, trade COVID wolves COVID wolves Ooh. Gives it a little, it gives it a little health, health. There you go. Sense, yeah, yeah. COVID's given, given me so much more time to trade. So, I'm very, if you can't say thankful. I mean, I know a lot of people have been severely affected. I caught COVID myself, and it was crazy as I was trading during COVID when I had COVID. So, so it was, it was fun. With that break, I think I realized um, that there were there were some setups that were happening that I felt like I would have taken um, and essentially that uh, taking that um, taking that break allowed me to really keep focus in on that and so uh, I just think it's that mental acuity that I was like I'm ready to do it again I'm mentally aware of what it takes to trade again and um, aware of more of um, bad habits and things that I things that I was doing that were forcing some of those losses. So when I had that, that mental awareness to be able to do that, that's when I said, hey, I'm ready to get back into the market. Thanks, you too. Yeah, thanks, you too. Yeah, of course. Bro, there's supposed to be no soliciting in this damn neighborhood, but everybody keeps knocking on my damn door. Woo! But welcome to Florida where if you, there's some hail, you can get a new roof for free. So it's interesting, but we're gonna slide outside. I'll show you later, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come here, honey. Ah! Hi, mama. Oh, I'm so cute. They're filming you. You're gonna bite me? You're gonna bite me? No. Yeah, she sees something. This is her, her, her So with my personal life, I've always tried to be the best I can personally be at something. And I feel like trading is one of those things that it is literally just you, you and the market, and you are in complete control. So I, I, I do, I am motivated by my family, of course, and um, my trading friends and friends in general, because I do want to say, hey, you know, today I had, you know, a thousand dollar day, a $500 day. And that is a really good feeling. Um, but it, it's, it's for, more for me, it's the skill that I wanna sharpen because this is a skill that's not going anywhere. If I, if I don't do it, I don't lose it. But at the same time, if I keep practicing day in and day out, charting and stuff that I can get better and I wanna do this for the rest of my life, essentially. Yeah, so um, the last, I'm coming off of a good couple of weeks of trading. Uh, essentially, my account um, is at 
150% of what I started with. So definitely, um, definitely better than I've been. And I think I'm at this point that I'm really gonna start compounding and leveling up my account. But mentally, I would say that um, I'm sharp right now. I'm not letting the losses get to my head. Um, but I'm I'm still making some making some silly mistakes. So that's what I'm that's what I'm really focused on is trying to keep those mistakes smaller and not let them get too big. If you apply yourself, if you do decide to put in the time to learn, you're going to do great. If you get your emotions under control and you study human psychology, you're going to do very well. If, if you're wanting to get into it, you got to take a leap of faith and at least try. You have to at least try and you have to roll with some punches to see the fruits of your labor in the long run. because you're not going to be able to have a reward when taking a trade without taking a risk and that's what it's all about is managing that risk and making sure that you win big and you lose small that that's the whole thing Life is a bonus, it's like...